Hey guys, welcome to Vancouver Island Bushcraft. So, I'm by the ocean, seeing as I'm on Vancouver Island. <laughs> You'll notice all of my uh, videos are in the bush, in bushcraft. But I thought I would uh, come by the ocean because this is pretty much um, most of the island, of course. All of the island is uh, surrounded by, oh, there's an oyster shell. Oyster shells everywhere here, actually. Um, yeah, so my wife and I are actually at a, a resort for the weekend, and uh, she's up there doing her thing. And I thought we would, I would uh, come out here and maybe find a spot on the on the beach and uh, have a cup of coffee with you. I'll just give you a, a turn. <clears throat> this is the resort right there, and couple of places so I thought I'd head down this way there's a fair amount of shells <clears throat> oyster shells everywhere kind of cool what all do we got here oyster shells everywhere I wonder if there's crabs in here. Let's see. Let's back down. Sorry for shaking you. Let's see here. Oh, shells on that one. More shells there. No little crabs so far. Yeah, it's interesting. I think I'll walk down the path a little bit more and see if I can see what I can find. Pretty good sized crab there. Oh, looks like it's had better days. Good size though. That was pretty much the last house. Looks like it's all beach from this point on. We'll go on a little further. That's a good sized crab leg. The amount of uh, shellfish and crabs and the like around here is incredible. It, uh, it's everywhere. It's a, it can be quite the feast. There's no red tide right now, which is a, a, a bloom that doesn't allow you to eat the mussels and the clams and the oysters, but uh, that's not prevalent right now. So a person could easily grab um, as much food as they could possibly eat in a very short amount of time uh, here on Vancouver Island. And they're, they're pretty big too. I'll put my pack down. So here's one that hasn't been opened. This is a huge oyster. The amount of food in there, there's another one here, two of them actually. Um, you know, you eat 10 of those, you're full. And uh, acquiring crabs, just be a matter of uh, going out just a little bit with uh, some of that oyster meat, dangling it from a string and a hook. The uh, crab would come up, grab the food, and uh, wouldn't let go. So you just have to pull it up and you got yourself some crabs. Again, three or four of those, you get yourself a huge meal. So it's kind of cool. This is quite the rock formation, eh? Isn't that weird? I 
don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, there's a, an oyster bed here. I don't know if you can see it through the water, but it goes all the way down there. Hundreds of oysters everywhere. Oysters over here. It's basically everywhere. There's, there's massive amounts. There's probably 20 right here. They're just everywhere. Just absolutely everywhere, hundreds and hundreds. More food than you can possibly imagine. And this isn't in the more of a this isn't really wilderness. This, uh, Comox is actually pretty close to here, so it's uh, there's you know a fair amount of houses. I, I don't know if you can see now. There's some houses up top there, and uh, you can imagine how much food there would be 20, 30 miles up the coast where there's no no uh, human beings. Because even here, the human beings can't harvest enough to make a, make a dent. It's, it's pretty incredible. Massive amounts. And they're big too. They're, they're probably, you know, you have to cut one in half to, to eat it. You wouldn't be able to eat one of these whole. Pretty massive. This is definitely where you'd want to be this time of year for food. All this uh, seaweed's all edible, and these rose hips. There's still a few on here. There's quite a few actually up there. Enough for a couple of meals for sure. All this seaweed. It's all edible. All this stuff here. I'm not sure what this is. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that. I'm not sure what that is. Anybody know what that is? Let me know. I don't think I've ever seen that before. But uh, yeah, all this seaweed is all edible. All good to eat. Rose hips. Yeah, there's a bunch of this stuff. Huh. Interesting. Well, I think I'll set up the old stove. I'm going to use the, uh, the homemade one and uh, use some methanol and make myself a coffee or a hot chocolate or something, I think. Just give you a spin around. Staircase right over there with a canoe. I guess they take their canoe and head down to the water right there and go canoeing. It's very quiet right now, very peaceful. The water's hardly moving. Sorry guys, <laughs> just grabbing the lighter. <laughs> Knocked you on your butt. Put you back here. Let's see if there's enough uh, straight area to do the stove thing. I'm gonna do the stove upside down. Like this. That should work out really good. That's nice and steady. I don't know, this needs to be higher up. I think we're gonna have to put this on a flatter surface. What do you guys think? All right, let's uh, we'll set up the sand. I think.
believe it or not, it's actually lit. Well, got the water on. This is really nice. Yeah, really nice. Just nice and relaxing, quiet, nobody around, no noise, no wind. It's uh, totally calm. The ocean's completely flat, no waves at all. Oh, the, uh, the stand and the homemade um, stove seem to be working good, sort of in a real life situation, not on, <laughs> on a desk. Um, nice and sturdy. So yeah, I think I'll uh, get this to boil and then uh, when my coffee's ready I'll uh, get you back here and uh, I saw a couple of jellyfish out there I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you the, uh, the jellyfish. going. <clears throat> okay, I had to finish my coffee and put this pack on because it was flipping all over the place, which is good to learn, to know. Um, having a pack over on one shoulder like that, I mean, you really can't do anything. Uh, I've been dropping it basically the entire time and uh, filming, putting it down and uh, doing some filming and stuff. So it's a good thing to know if uh, you need to do anything, put the pack on properly. So anyway, here's the jellyfish I was telling you about. It's pretty cool. It's alive. It's a fairly large one too. I don't think there's any other ones around. Oh, there's a small one. There's a real small one right there. Hey, that's kind of neat, eh? I would like everything. There's some baby crabs. There's the little guys. Lots of these around. You could uh, collect 50 or 60 of these. They're underneath these rocks, eh? It's just a matter of moving the rocks and finding areas where there's ones. They're, they're pretty much everywhere. It's just a matter of finding them. It's like, here's another one right there. But uh, yeah, you could collect these. Here's another one, trying to hide. <laughs> yeah, here's another one. Lots of that stuff around here you can eat. All these barnacles, these are all edible as well. All this seaweed, that's all edible. Yeah, lots of stuff around here. You gotta really look too. You gotta move stones around and take a look inside. Lots of foraging. This uh, grass is really good to eat as well. Another crab. Whole bunch of periwinkles. Those are um, snails, uh, seafood, or seafood, um, saltwater snails. Bunch of periwinkles around here. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what else we can find. Looks like we got some, uh, some clam shells as well. They're, uh, they're open, but uh, here's some clothes up there. So this one's open too. Let's see. All sorts of bugs there. Here's a seal clam. Sure, what kind of bug that is? This one here. Oh, all sorts of insects. 
And of course, we know insects are edible. Yeah, they're everywhere. Kind of made my way over these rocks, so I'm kind of in the middle of a pool here. All sorts of interesting stuff. There's a leg of a crab and pretty neat stuff. Doing a bit of a balancing act here on a couple of <laughs> on a couple of uh, stones. Oh, there's a, another jellyfish, I think. Oh no, it's not. You know, it would take very little effort as a closed oyster to um, open this up and take the meat and uh, put it on a rock like this with a hook and a line. And just wait until uh, a uh, seagull or some other bird came. And uh, this is a survival situation, of course. You wouldn't want to do that in any capacity um, uh, if you don't have to. But it uh, be a good way to acquire bird, uh, any kind of bird. Um, they'll, uh, they'll eat this in a second, especially if it starts to smell. It'll, uh, it'll really attract the birds. Um, another easy way to acquire food. Put this guy back. There we go. Lots of clams here. These are all sealed. That one's open, but these are all sealed clams. Looks like we got a clam bed here. They're everywhere over here. I didn't even notice that until I kneeled down to start doing this uh, this recording. And uh, it's amazing what you notice uh, when you when you kneel down because uh, I noticed the clam bed and now. I'm next to this rock, and I thought it was just speckled with um, with dirt. But if you look closely, I'll go really close. These are small snails, and there's probably a thousand snails. All those black specks on all these rocks are snails. And if I hadn't have uh, kneeled down, I wouldn't even noticed it. Isn't that interesting? How's this for an oyster? It's as big as my hand. That's massive. Here's another one. Look at this. Absolutely massive. I'm not sure what these are. But that is a, looks like there's maybe three oysters all connected. But uh, that's the size of it. This is my hand. That's the oyster. That's incredible. These are huge. And they're everywhere. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's some there, down here. And I just kneeled down for a second to show you that one. It's pretty neat. Well, guys, that's about it for my little walk. So we're about, I guess, an hour away from my house right now. But uh, quite honestly, about a 15 minute walk and uh, the same environment is, is, uh, is prevalent around where I live as well. Um, I live in Nanaimo, which is right on the coast. So um, this kind of food is, is everywhere. Um, you know, anybody can take it. So uh, yeah, I know I, I do the bushcraft thing and show how to use edibles and that kind of thing in the forest, but I'll tell you the truth, you know, if uh, there's a situation where I needed to survive, first thing I would do is head up island get to the coast and have unlimited food supply uh, and never have to worry about it even in the winter time um, I mean it's December right now it's December what is it December 12th or 13th so this is about as desolate as it gets food wise and the amount of food in this small area is pretty amazing so it's definitely something that uh, I would do it's a 
not head into the bush, but uh, have my, uh, my bivouac perhaps 100 yards into the bush next to the ocean and uh, use the ocean as my main source of food because um, it's a, it really is an unlimited amount of food. Myself and my family, which is four of us, five with my other daughter, I suppose it's five, yeah. Um, an area like this that hasn't been picked over. And uh, of course, this island is huge. I mean, this, you could easily go somewhere and never see somebody. Um, you could survive quite nicely. You have a lot of resources, um, food, unlimited rocks. <laughs> As you can see, just a ridiculous amount of rocks. You can build all sorts of stuff. Seems you have all the time in the world. Um, yeah, get a small boat and you get all the fishing you can possibly handle. So I just thought I'd show you what the, my environment is like here on Vancouver Island, other than the woods. Um, we're of course surrounded by <laughs> the ocean. And this is the kind of resources that we can enjoy if necessary. Um, you'd never want to snag a, a bird with, uh, with a hook, because that's pretty cruel, unless you, <laughs> you're in a survival situation. You don't want to harvest this stuff if you don't need to. I just finished having breakfast. I don't need to harvest any of this stuff. No need to kill anything, um, unless you're, you're hungry, unless you, you have to, right? But it's here, it's here for the taking, and uh, with all the seaweed and periwinkles and all the shellfish, the crabs, uh, it just goes on. It'd be a pretty good, uh, pretty good place to live, I think. Anyway, thanks for joining me on Vancouver Island Bushcraft. I plan on doing a few more of these uh, videos using the ocean as a resource. And uh, when I go out, if I don't have any food, I have no problem with harvesting this stuff. It's got to be in a time when there's no red tide. Um, red tide is a, a bloom of algae that the uh, shellfish eat, and you can't you can't eat the shellfish if it's a if it's a red tide time. So you have to make sure you know what you're doing. But uh, yeah, all right. I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a great day. It's been fun, and uh, thank you for watching Vancouver Island Bushcraft.